My name's Brian English, forum name Hyperbytes, and I'd like to welcome you to this new series on building Server Connect and App Connect custom modules and formatters. This module is not a JavaScript tutorial as such. It's primarily designed to show you how to create the HJSON files required to interface with custom modules and formatters. The inbuilt methods used within Wappler to parse any output passed over from the input to the modules and also how to integrate third-party NPMs via the Wappler interface. So we'll start the course by looking at server connect modules and format and then at the end of the course apply what we've learned to app connect and to produce the app connect extensions. So let's make a start. So let's first of all have a look at um, project settings. Um, in this particular project, I'm actually based in Docker. So if we look at our project options, you can see that, look at our general options, and you can see there from targets, this is uh, quite clearly a Docker-based um, project. And if we go into extensions, you will see um, options to create new extension, add an extension and delete an extension. If I want to add an extension, just click on the plus sign and we can add the MPN name or the uh, GitHub uh, repo name and we can add that extension in. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swap project and I'm going to go into a pre-made project. Now this one we will see is Wappler development local server so you'll see our target is also local server. And this is a mistake that you can make right at the very start, which is going to cause you problems. Because if we go into our extensions and click add, you'll see that it says that you basically you can't add a custom extension to a Wappler local server based extension. So that's a message you get. It says change it over to own server but of course you can't do that um, so that's why I'm highlighting it now you've got to get this right when you first create your project so what's the way around that well it's actually very simple um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create now a new project and this is going to be a project we'll use throughout the initial stages of our um, tutorial so we're going to look at down to wrong one. I'm going to create a new folder in here just called extensions. Sorry about this. There we are. But I'm going to change that to own server. And then we're going to be using Node.js throughout uh, all of this course. I might make some references to PHP, but uh, basically we're going to be sticking with Node. So, right, so I'm going to save that. It will ask you about installing your Node packages as required. There we are. Now we can um, go back into our settings. I'm going to go into the extensions, tar sorry, targets. And you'll see that we can now actually just change the development target to WAPA local server. And that'll work absolutely fine. That's no problem. We go to extensions now and we have the ability to add extensions. So what we've done is we've created a own server set up, but we've set the target to be Wapler local server, and that works absolutely fine. So that's the um, site or the project that we're going to be doing everything in in our initial stages. So I suppose it's time now to start looking at uh, a bit of HJSON code, so uh, we'll have a look at that next. Okay, so let's take a look at our um, HJSON and JS files. I've 
put this into a web page because, as you probably know, you can't actually add a comment into a uh, JSON file. So I've copied this over into a web page so I could add the comments and read. So we have the HJSON on our left panel and we have some very, very simple JavaScript on the right. So in this example, we uh, I'm going to look at lines two and three first. We have a module statement and that defines the name of the associated JS file. So in this case, this module would look for a JavaScript file called mymodule1.js. Action is uh, to do with the function itself within that file, a JS file. You see action my code. And if we look at the other side, we'll see it says export my code one. And that is the action name. So they must match for the JS for, uh, function to integrate with the uh, HJSON interface definition file. Convention is um, that your type, it can be anything, you put actually any unique name in there, but the convention is it's the module under bar action name. Where does that convention come from? Um, basically, George says so, so I'm not going to argue with him. Um, we have a group title. The group title is the uh, group title that you would see within a um, API file. So if I just create an API file. These are your group titles and these are your predefined ones that you have there, but you can add your own individual sections within that as well. So in this case, the group title is test modules. It will create a completely new entry in that list um, called test modules and it will use the icon, the, the font awesome icon as defined within group icon. Those two elements must be there, obviously. Um, just as a little aside, if you're integrating with an existing um, category, then you need to specify its font awesome um, group icon, which means you've got to know what the group icon is. I have produced a list which is published on the forum which maps those across. Uh, if you leave it out you'll end up with it. You basically remove the icon from that interface. The title, that's the uh, title obviously of the uh, module itself. And then you have the icon individual to the um, action that we are the module that we're defining here. So what we'll have is the group will be test modules. Within that group of test modules, you will have an element called demo test module, which will be showing in this case a question mark icon. Then we're going to our properties. At the moment, the only properties we're looking at is the uh, variables. So first of all, we've got a group statement here and it says test data. And that is the data that you would see, or the entry that you would see. Um, I'll just randomly pick something up, um, set value. That's this entry here where it says set value properties. So in this case, that panel would be headed with uh, test data. And then we're only defining two variables, and these are the mandatory ones that you will need within any AJSON file. It must have a name option and it must have an output option. So in this, we're saying, right, our action name, and that is a, just simply a unique name used internally for the uh, that variable within the UI. Option's name is name. That is the option that is passed to your function. That will be found at options.name. It has a title again that we would uh, see in the um, HJ, sorry, in the interface. These are the titles here: name, global name, value, data type. Data type, obviously, in this case is text. We have text. We have text and number. We have number. We have a number of other uh, entries there, uh, which we'll be looking at as we work through. 
required. That's whether this is a mandatory input or not. Um, that can be a true or false value because obviously in some cases not every value would need to be completed. A default value, again, this can apply to all inputs with a little bit of a quirk specific to the name input. If you put default value there and then add a new module, you would sort of expect the default value to appear in there. So if, if we go back here, let's say we add a uh, database query, you notice we have a default entry appears there of query. And for a long time, I made the assumption that that is what should happen. And uh, by putting in the default value, and it didn't. I assumed it was a bug for a long time. Well, it turns out specific to that particular name variable. To do that, you have to add an extra line in, base name. By adding base name module one, that means that module one will appear as a default name for your module. And then lastly, we need an output. Obviously, there's no point in having a module or a format or whatever if you can't output the result of it. So again, that's just name output, option name output, title output. It will be of type Boolean, and you should set that to a default of false. Um, apparently, it can cause problems by setting it to true uh, initially. So keep that at false. And that is basically um, a rundown of our um, interface components. So let's look, let's look at actually creating those files. And uh, let's engage that interface and let's have a look at the output of the, uh, the module itself. OK, so... Uh, we're now going to create the structure required for the uh, testing of these extensions. And it's pretty simple. All we do is we create a folder called extensions. These will be server connect extensions. So we create a subfolder of server connect. And then within that, we create another folder, in this case modules, and when we get on the formatters we will need a folder called formatters. And we're going to be placing our files into these folders um, ready for generating our interface. So let's create a file. Now uh, our JS file name is called mymodule1. And we can pretty much call our HJSON file whatever we want. Um, we're going to create file. I'll just call it the same name. Just means that when you're visually looking at it, you can see which HJSON files match with the um, appropriate JS files. So what we need to do is to populate these. So I'm just going to do that now, and then we'll look at the populated files. OK, so I've now added, um, first of all, the HJSON, which is the definition of the interface. I made a couple of minor changes. Hope you don't mind. Uh, I've called the group title Tutorial Modules, um, rather than the original, which said Test Modules. And I've changed the title as well of this module to my first module. And I'm just going to change that group title as well while we're busy to uh, module inputs. So obviously our action is my code one, my module that module is my module one, so our JS is my module one, and here, very simple, exports my code one, reference to the objects, the options which we'll not be using at this stage, and all this is going to do is return OK. So what we need to do now is completely quit Wapler, 
So I'm going to do that from the tray icon of Windows because I'm in a Windows environment, obviously. And then I'm going to reopen Wappler. Okay, so let's have a look and see what happens. I go into my module, an API action I've created called my module. Click on the here, uh, and now we'll see we have a, a new category, tutorial modules. And if we select look, we can see my first module. That's it. We've actually created our first extension. I'm going to ask for that to be output. I'm going to save that and I'm going to file that in the browser. There we see exactly as we expect that returns the name of the server action and the data associated with, with it, which is a nice, simple OK. So that is the a module at its simplest form. Uh, we'll be building on that uh, as we work through. Um, I will obviously be adding the code to this um, into the, the forum post and we'll be looking in next at how we would actually create an NPM from that um, module that we've created. So I look forward to uh, you joining me next time.